What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneaker Show. As always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts, my two friends. First off, to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. <laughs> what was that? I, I don't like, know. I'm you, trying to bring some energy. Were you like, were you like <laughs> Joe Rogan shooting the arrow well, at uh, the how come at the Cybertruck? How come? What? Yeah, the what? Elon Musk uh, Cybertruck. You didn't see it went viral. Uh, no. But speaking about the UFC, how come I haven't heard me. anything in 12? You're you're related to this. Don't worry. We'll we, while to... we started off on Joe Rogan no. UFC. This is really Hold not on. my episode. Are you ready for Cheeto Sean O'Malley? How come you oh, didn't yeah. put in the slack? Oh, well. did you see it? Am I telling you for the first Wait, time? Okay. Cheeto and Sean O'Malley are fighting for the title in March. I thought now they. I'm had t- no, oh, okay. Hold on. No, no, no. Sorry. They had been talking about it for set. I didn't. Set. I, didn't realize I was, it was waiting set. for you. I didn't it was set. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you should the be. Apology, the yeah. apology. Yeah. To my left, <laughs> listen. You maybe not a big UFC guy, but a big Cheeto guy. Yes, I like Cheeto very. Yeah. Mr. Brendan. Exactly, <laughs> Mr. Brendan that. Dunn. We get to pull up. Where is it? Vegas. Yeah, March? I'll be. Should. I'll be in his corner. You want to say hit the win? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> you in the corner. You and Action Bronson in the corner. Is speak- that is that so ludicrous? Yeah. Speaking speaking of that, uh, our friend like. Cheeto, he had recently been seen in the upcoming Action Bronson 1906. Yeah, that's right. New Balance, seen a lot of uh, Bronson. I think Bronson was wearing them himself, but Cheeto been wearing a couple of times. Had some up close photos, and that shoe looks pretty nice. I'm they excited were, for it. They were together yesterday, and they called into Ariel Hawani's show, <laughs> uh, him in action. Yeah. When like yeah, the the title fight was announced. So we need to get action. Yeah, let's bring action back. Bring back some action. Before the end yeah, okay. of the year. Okay. Time for some action. action. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it is time for some action. I'm, I'm, I'm down. You want to know big uh, sneaker news, literally? <laughs> uh, this uh, okay, last we last week's episode of Full Size Run, the third of the final eight. A classic. Episodes with the A one classic. and only. A-ha. A classic. A classic. <laughs> what do you guys do with the sunglasses? Jim I want Jones. those. Um, I, I think they're them. here at the office. I may have to hit my boy Vintage Frames or Capo. Maybe Capo at Complex Con in two weeks. Catch you in traffic. Yeah, maybe he could bring a pair. We will see y'all at Complex Con. Yes. By the way, we will be at Complex Con. We'll be on the floor. Sneaker of the Year panels coming up. My boys, you're gonna be in the crowd with me. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do you guys feel like I throw you under the bus sometimes or uh, no? Wait, some, do you? Uh, no. A little bit. I don't. But you don't think that? Wait, wait, no. <laughs> you hold don't on. feel that way, or you don't throw us under the bus? I feel like I take like you take some of the shots, yeah, and you have to deflect some. Do of you them. ever feel like, man, this? You said you don't on the record. Do you ever feel like I pass off the blame in a way that's like yes. dickheadish? <laughs> you are no, nah. not dickheadish. You are. Uh, I'm like the shine to your ditty. Oh wow, word. <laughs> that's why I love him. Loyal. Who is he? <laughs> Wait, so loyal, then, I'm just the one who's taking the rap for like the like the. Well, but that's no. I'm you're the not one, taking I'm the, the one who's dying on the sword. No, you Joe stand on business. Oh, you stand on it. Hold on, though. No. That was a cognizant <laughs> thought because sometimes I'm just that. like, yeah, I'm on the stand, like point. But I feel like and the background on this is, I think the the, the best example is the 2020 Gazelles. to Complex Sneaker of the Year panel at Complex Con. And the Adidas, <laughs> this this conversation won't die. Right, but this is more about <laughs> the Gucci Adidas collaboration that we as a group had put on our top ten sneaker of the year list. The Complex Sneaker staff and yep. was the most hotly contested entry on that list on stage at the Complex Con panel, which included Jim Jones, Jadakus, <laughs> Clark Kent, Vashti, Vashti. But I want to hear yes, and 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 some of the panelists were saying you guys are crazy for putting that shoe on there and. In that moment, you deflected to an extent and said, it wasn't me, it was the team. Yep. I also push back on them because I'm always like, you guys didn't even r- rank yours, so we don't mm-hmm. want to hear it. All right. I didn't want you to, I didn't want any resentment building in, in Long Beach though, Convention Center. Sometimes, though, when you. <laughs> Never. When you. Okay. When you, you sure? In, Never. In, I've learned in situations like that. When that was you, the wealthy lesson this year. Uh oh, here we go. In he situ- gave me so many compliments hold on, hold on, now. Hold on, hold on. Oh, in situations like that, because. I've had situations where someone has like pressed me on camera, and when they, if they someone sees a little bit of wavering mm-hmm. in you in the situation, it opens the door for people to just start like running in and like I'm gonna dance on you, mm-hmm. like rain I'm, dancing. Oh, on I thought you said Coffin? I've had situations where someone pressed me and no, I was on, in the but back. I'm saying, <laughs> hold on, I'm not saying <laughs> okay, but you know I would they're, if they're gonna start, they see the crack in the door and they're gonna start mm. stomping on you because it's like the second you're like, hey, no, it wasn't me, don't worry, it was someone else, and then. It starts open the thing, but if, if in that instance, if you just be like, 
we made the list and we stand on it. We think it's a good shoe. It kind of just <laughs> shuts but down. But that's the truth. Yeah, of course. I don't know. He, he, he may be in his seat in the crowd like this. <laughs> okay. What are people going to say to you? Sit next to him and what calm him say? down. Sneakers, he usually sits with Chris Schoenberger and Sarah Honda. Maybe you calm him down it's sneakers. just in case it goes it's left sneakers. a little bit. At the end of the day, it's sneakers. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, I hate that excuse. It's life? I hate that excuse because that like minimizes what we do. I'm not saying it minimizes it. I mi It minimizes what I think is when people like want to get super seriously like offended or upset or like lash out in ways that aren't acceptable. Mm. Or, or approach people and talk to them in ways that are like demeaning, et cetera. It's mm. like, dude, it's just shoes. Like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm not saying that what it demeans what we do. Yeah. But the, what we do should never be taken to the point of someone trying to discredit you publicly as a person totally. just because of your opinion on a sneaker. Uh, I That's also, all. Agreed. Yeah. I also like the Jim Jones episode where you ran down your resume and then at the end he was like, how the do you know that about the Adidas <laughs> shoe? Okay. Which I love that sneaker. I over. also love that sneaker. I yes. feel like that was a finish line shoe back in the day. Which, what was the model, Welty? The Q-Star? The Quest-Star. Quest-Star. What I was trying to get to, oh, so we sorry. totally, we totally, I know, but that's we, what we're, we're, gonna, gonna, be, we're gonna be all over the place. Do, today. What I, what I meant was when I brought up Jim Jones, I said biggest, yeah, I don't even biggest know things, biggest things happening on sneaker internet, literal biggest things. The one and only, we posted something saying Jim Jones thinks Nike should give sneakers to good students. Which, if you watch the episode, the takes actually kind of weird because he hates Nike refurbishing shoes and selling them back. But okay, the one and only. Shaquille O'Neal responded to the Complex Sneakers Instagram post. Did you know this? No, I didn't know. What did he say? Okay, so when Jim Jones said things that Nike should give sneakers to kids with good grades, mm -hmm. Shaq responds. Shaq, Reeboks, yes. president of basketball. Yes, verified at Shaq responds, yo, Jim, me, Allen Iverson, and Reebok will do it. Holla at me. Oh, dream team right there. Dude. Capo don't let them goons loose. <laughs> Whoa! I hope that Reebok does that, and I hope that Shaq can come on here on our podcast and put that program together. Shaq, AI, and Capo, the new big three. Name a better trio. Huh. Why didn't we post that as a quote card, though? We should <laughs> definitely post that. Yeah, that's incredible. Wow, I, I didn't that see Shaq that. Shaq follows through on it. But like I said, more than anything, I hope we can have Shaq on here on our show on our podcast. We need that. Years over. His shoes. Yeah, Shaq, one of my favorite sneaker shopping episodes. Great guy. I hope we get that. Let's do it. Jersey City's finest. Yep. Besides you. Know, you. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Joe, when are we going to get you some performance sneakers? Why? Did you see me out with something? I didn't see you out. I saw a video of you. In fact, you sent it to me. Of you on the treadmill. Air in the 70s No. Maybe even worse. This is good. That maybe even. This I almost is bad. sent it to this him, is bad too. Behavior. We're going to put it in. I wish you would not act like this. I was on Demon Time. I know. What do you yes, mean? I, I sent it to you because I was on Demon, Demon Time, Time right? but explain. What does that even mean? Uh, you'll see. <laughs> what does that even mean? Demon Time is when you have that energy. Get, uh, but like, Oh, what? You don't know when you're in the weight room, you're never on Demon no. Time listening to Bon Jovi in Jersey no, City? No. Okay. He leads a godly life. There's nothing wrong with demon time, is there? The little purple emoji. I know. I just. I just That's like, just what I mean. I don't, but I say. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 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 Yes, I was in. You, I was traveling uh, this. So sorry. yes, wealthy. Sometimes, as we know, yep. he hits the treadmill in the 270s. Yeah. Not an appropriate shoe to work Not out for in. a while either. But the type okay. of shoe that if you don't know anything about shoes, you bought them and you think it's a good workout shoe and you work out in them. Yep. Not a performance shoe. Joe sent me a video of Nepada. him on don't the ruin treadmill. The story yet. In the Pata Air Max TN, the Barcelona joints? With the incline, too. Why? It wasn't just a gingerly stroll. Why? On 10, the incline was on 10. You, you want to ask me about the speed, <laughs> not at, not answering. But <laughs> be for a walk around the neighborhood. No, the incline is 10. It's like a hike. You might catch me with Salehi soon. <laughs> but I had I didn't have any Scaling shoes. Mountains I didn't have Hollywood any shoes. Hills. I wasn't in an area where I could just go and pick up uh, an A6 or a 2 set. Uh, a6 like or 270. Um, yeah, 270. Yeah, yeah. So I had to use the Pada TNs. And you don't mind taking a cool hype limited edition shoe like that and just putting it to work in a semi performance way? I have to tell you, I did think twice. I did think twice. But the other 
option would have been the blue a cold wall tns and that's where i gotta dr draw the line can't be on the treadmill 10 incline which i said before 10 incline on the with the, <laughs> with the cold wall TNs. blue tns that's where i draw the line pata what's the difference the, the other, leather what one that one's meshing and breathes the difference is i was fortunate thank you to have multiple pairs of the Pata TNs. <laughs> okay, that's the difference. What? That's the multiple? difference. Wow. Yeah, I ended up. That's yeah, nice. it took you a while. Yes, but there's nothing wrong with that. Because you got him a couple weeks after me. Here's the other thing right? I would say. You were before me. Thank you. He was before me. He he was like the first one to have them in the States. <laughs> Just making that up, but it seems like it. Here's, a, here's another thing. So I'll describe that. I had to make do with what I had. And I didn't bring workout shorts, so I had to go to... What were you wearing? What I will say is I had to make do with what I was given, mm -hmm. and I didn't bring workout shorts. So I was waiting. I'm glad he brought this up. I went to the hotel lobby. They only had bathing suits. Then I went to the weight room, like, and they had Lululemon shorts. And you were wearing them? I bought a pair. Okay. Life changing. Have you ever worked out in them? I that's one of the brands that I can uh, I just can't get behind. I knew it, but why? Cuz I've never bought Lululemon. All you hear about is like Lul Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think there's some like, massive. I know there's like some some guys where just the, the name the name throws me off. It just feels like a little funny. I don't know. One of the best workout shorts I've ever worked out in. You're willing to publicly endorse them on that level? I am. I am. Because I usually wear Nike Dry Fit, which I obviously love. I just think like yoga pants and stuff, and it doesn't come to my head where that's where I'm going to go buy my workout gear. These uh, shorts, let me tell you. Tell us, Joe. The Lulu Lemon shorts. They had a built-in <laughs> liner with the Pata Air Max TNs on the treadmill. It was a fit? I felt like David Goggins. <laughs> Do you know who that is? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I he knows like, who that is more than I know. Do you know? going to carry the boats? I felt like him throwing out inspiration a little bit. Instead, yeah. my inspiration was just sending him a video with the little purple, you ruined, you <laughs> purple ruined, emoji. You ruined my weekend. What? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. What purple emoji was it, though? <laughs> in the, in the, <laughs> all in right, the all right. You're awake. Okay, you're awake. You're awake. Gore-Tex Air Max 90 Infrared. Did you guys see all the images of these? I, I did see it. that. This is like, I mean, I'm sure there's like a lot, it, like for. You can't let me be happy for three minutes? <laughs> oh. No, no, no. Tell me. Tell no, me, I tell feel me, like there's me. a lot of people that there's, I remember back in the day, there'd be like real like infrared 90 collectors. Yes. There's like. 30 permutations of the shoe. Yeah. And people don't realize that there's, there's like a version of it where it's like orange. Yes. Like, Safety orange, maybe. Like an older pair where it's more that orangish shade than the the red the infrared mm -hmm. um so there's people i've seen people who lined up like the history of air uh the 2010 release i think hyperfuse crooked tongues yeah, version. Th that's cool and i feel like if you're one of those people and you get the gore-tex in there and it, just you get the gore-tex in general it's a cool shoe yeah and i love infrared 90s i think maybe it might be my favorite air max of, of, all, all, time? of all time okay we talked about that we, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what air max one Regular colorway or the Air Max 90 for red? I, I go think, with the 90. Yeah, I think I'd rather. Because I, I got the recent one, the one that had the big Nike Air tag, the plastic one on it. Yeah. Love that shoe. Um, It's cool to see. It's hard to get super excited about, though. Okay. Is, is that safe to say? I know what you mean, but I'm excited about a Gore-Tex version of the infrared Air Max 90, and I feel like that's a shoe that I could get a lot of use out of. And I'm missing infrared 90s in my life right now. I think I still have one pair tucked away. But another pair was stolen in the mail, and I had to fight for a refund for many, many months for them and only got yep. a fraction of my money. So the infrared that. Air yep. Max 90, you, you remember that saga? Yeah. It's definitely one I complained about a lot yeah. to everybody in my life who would listen. Still Thank you. Kind of. <laughs> um, so I think for that reason, I'm just craving an infrared Air Max 90 right now, and I like the idea of a Gore-Tex one. I, I, all those other random Gore-Tex like Air Force Ones and – Air Max 90s don't really do anything for me, and I don't mm -hmm. don't need them in my what life. About the SF Air Force One, remember that the Complex Con? The that Mark, was a moment. Mark Fernandez exclusive. That was a moment. <laughs> Tall things. I know you wore the SF Air no, back didn't. in the day. You never had a pair. Of, I had, a and pair, I don't but think I never wore. I had, I I had the exclusive uh, story o on it. Odell, right? No. Oh, uh, sorry. Odell did the orange one. That was the mid, but like the all white one, like uh, Ben Kirshner. Yeah. Yeah. Designed design it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I had done a talk with him. On the website, right? Yep. 
I had the olive ones, but I never. I, I don't think that shoe has aged particularly well. I think it was cool for the time, and made a big mark. And maybe I am biased because a big part of its rollout was that Complex Con debut. But I think it was a decent shoe. I don't. I don't think it, that that was the one that surprised me. I don't know if we've like t- talked about this on the podcast before, so I don't want to like rehash like all the old stories. But That's yeah, what we're here to do. No, I just remember like I got the exclusive on it. Nike had hit me about it, and I remember like being like, "This is what you guys are excited about." Like you, you know, sometimes there's like a new shoe coming out, yes. and you kind of can't see the vision for yes. it, can't and then the it vibe. takes. But then it takes off, and you're like, okay, I get it now. Or sometimes it doesn't take off, and you're mm-hmm. like, maybe I was hyped on it, and it didn't take off, mm-hmm. or vice versa, et cetera. And that was one of the ones I was just like, I just didn't see a, a super high Air Force One being like, oh, yeah, I need that. You but know? do you think it took off? It, the, fir- like, the first few colorways, that shoe like sold out. The Complex Con one, I remember I had the all-white pair. Mm-hmm. Um, had been given them for the story where we shot them. Uh, this is a story I don't know if I told on here before. I had them in recent Nike collaborator Jinx. Really liked the shoes, so I gave him former the, coworker of yes, ours. I gave him the shoes because oh, I wasn't nice gonna wear you. them. And then three weeks later, someone from Nike emails me. He's like, "Hey, why didn't you send me the shoes back?" And I'm like, "Well, I thought you gave them to me." So I, so I uh, had it was really awkward of having to ask him. Did, did they ask had, for them back? I had to ask him for the shoes back. Wow. Yeah, you gave the sneakers to Jinx, and then you told him I need the Little did back. I know, though, but like two, three months later, two months later, they sent me a pair, a free pair. I was going to say. And I ended up giving him the shoes. I was going to say. it all worked. It all worked out in the yeah. universe, but that was a very awkward, uh, hey, uh, I know I gave you these uh, sneakers, but um, I kind of need Yeah, them that's back. a tough one. Uh, <laughs> Shouts to Jinx, though, yep. because he teased yeah. the Morehouse collab. Morehouse collab. We got to get him on here. I would love to talk to him. Oh yeah, his bring him work. back. Yeah, you can go infrared watch his full 90. size run episode too. Ancient and Still ancient full size yeah. run episode. One last thing about the infrared ninety quintessential. I love that shoe. It doesn't look good on my feet though. Do you? Because it's white. If it might be ever in, wear Air Max nineties. I don't think I've ever seen you in one. No, I have. I remember as a complex intern mm-hmm. on my lunch break, my sister and I used to go right in like. The, uh, right near Bryant Park, Simply Pasta was one of my favorite places. <laughs> Great lunch special. And then we would always go to training camp. And I remember yep. I Shout bought the... Duty. Yes, of course. I bought the Louis Vuitton Takeoff Huff Air Max 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that and the Infrared 90... Are the only ones you've ever owned? Probably the only ones I've ever bought, yeah. And didn't really wear them? No, not even... I don't even think I wore the Huff ones but that that brown louis vuitton scheme i think those two and i definitely have in at home a pair of infrared 90s but they're like yeah the the toe box is yellow because i don't wear them that much what's All your right. favorite air max 90 besides infrareds yeah i mean infrared is the knee-jerk answer that i come to is it does this have to be one that i've owned because i no. feel like no 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 just i feel just like there are so many classic air max 90s mm-hmm. that i wanted for mm-hmm. a long time throughout the last mm-hmm. decade but that I don't covet that much anymore because I know that to acquire them would require a ton of money of me and wouldn't really pay off because they're crumbling. But yep. tongue-in-cheek Air Max 90s, the Dizzy, Dizzy Rascal, Rascal pair, Dave White Air Max 90s mm-hmm. based on the Neon 95. What about the Homegrown? Uh... Homegrown Air Max 90 was never a huge one for me, but cool shoe. Um Crep Air Max 90s, the the hemp you know from that pack with that the would be my, That would Air probably Max be mine. Ones. Those are incredible, but I, I never owned any of those. I feel like most of the 90s that I've owned have been very pedestrian. You know what is a favorite one of mine from the past 10 years is that Tiger Camo version that Nike did one Black Friday released alongside the... It was that the Atmos one? Yeah, it was that, and then the Duck Camo Infrared one. Mm-hmm. And people people like the Duck Camo Infrared one from that set a lot more, but I never really cared for those. They, they go for way more money, but... I, I remember, paid a decent amount for the Tiger Camo Air Max 90. I remember that shoe was on, I think it was the Air Max 1 from that set. Mm-hmm. It was on one of your infamous Sneaker of the Year YouTube panels, the one with uh, Gary Warnett, rest in peace, yes. uh, Ronnie Fye, yep. Russ Benson, Half Clark Hill. Kent. Half Hill, maybe? No, not oh, that one. Not um, that one. Okay. Lawrence Sloshman. Uh, oh. I think that was 2013. And uh, they were talking about the Air Max ones, and Ronnie Feig said, "I can tell you don't like the. Or, or, this is a this is a paraphrase. paraphrase. Careful now. 
paraphrasing, but it was the the gist of it was you don't know shoes. You don't you don't you don't. I can. The reason you don't like this shoe is because you've never seen it in person. Regarding which sneaker? The, the those camo Air Max ones, because it was something to do with the way the camo print was, and it was like actually suede on like the hits. Got it, it wasn't just like a uniform print to it. Okay, and that was the thing. One of my favorite Air Max nineties, which I still can't identify to this day, and people have looked it up. You're showing me a picture, an old picture of Kanye West with Air Max nineties on. I think it's a overseas exclusive. We'll put it in here. I yeah, bet the, our boy Magdy can figure it out. Yeah, we had the. I'm doc- seeing it at a little bit of a distance a right now. We big had the fan of Dr. An- Romanelli jacket on. We'll put this photo in. Shout to Matt Doyle on the lens. But I remember I interviewed Dr. Romanelli once at a British night. Uh, British Knights. BK Knights. I had I had British Knights growing yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And he said something like crazy about rappers at the time, and then oh, the okay. PR brand hit me up to hmm. ask me not to include in the story, and I think we still did. But okay. Anyways, go. going rogue as usual. <laughs> no, that's not going rogue. I know. That's just I know. Stick, stick, job. That's staying true to the yes, interview. You're right. Um, my favorite uh, Air Max ninety colorway besides the infrared is actually the OG women's, and I've actually never had a chance to own yeah. that one. The white pink and blue and gray pair oh yeah good one yeah one of the air max 90 stories that i hope to chase down and trace the origin of is was it bill clinton or george george hw george bush hw bush who had the presidential yeah. air max 90 yep. player exclusive yeah and there's a few images of it floating around there's online. like a dead stock pair somewhere yeah where, like the soles are cracked on it i need to know how that sneaker came to be and i feel like some point in the next five years i will Put a lot of effort into understanding the true origin and story of that. I remember shoe. posting that once online, and people be like, "Oh, it's really cool for you to glorify uh, war criminals on your Twitter feed." And I'm like, "Dude, it's just a pair of sneakers. Like, I'm not talking about politics. Like, get out of here." <laughs> Should we talk about some upcoming shoes real quick? Yeah. yeah. Let's sprinkle a little bit of leaks in. There we, we go. got some stuff we got to sit on for a while longer, but I will mention here that there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adidas Shell Toe coming. I have Superstar. zero zero. Interest? Yes. You li- like that zero, none. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, well, okay. Tell us how you really feel. Why? How many times is Adidas doing this whole uh, pop cultural? How are they doing? Though? Too many times, you think? Yeah. Like Simpsons, mm-hmm. etc. Just in a shell toe. I get it. Shells. Get it. Yeah. Ninja Heroes Turtles. Turtles. Shells, yes. Turtle Heroes. power. Exactly. I have the z- world's most fearsome fighting teams. That's actually true. Heroes in a half shell in your green. And man, I tried watch. I tried watch. I think it's what I tried watching that new Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. <laughs> on uh, on a flight on the flight to Malaysia. Mm-hmm. God, that thing is awful. Okay, well, I'm sorry to upset you, but I thought at least that the audience would appreciate knowing what sneakers are coming <laughs> yeah, out. Keep going. <laughs> and I do <laughs> think it's clever one. that it's like a shell toe, a superstar. They are really upset him. Yeah, he's done for the rest of the pod. <laughs> just <laughs> shut off all yep, like, that's it. synapses. We broke the story earlier this year about Nigo working with Nike. It sounds like one of the silhouettes that will be included is the Air Force 3, mm. which is a high degree of difficulty, yeah. in my opinion, in order to get people to care about something like that. I'm not going to come on here and pretend like I ever cared about the Air Force 3 or loved the Air Force 3. I think that's a sneaker that a lot of old heads are quite into and will say that they would wear... For me, it doesn't do a lot, but there was a Thanksgiving pack, and my friend Dave had a pair of those way back. Dave oh, Matthews? No. Oh. <laughs> it, it's a shoe that I'd probably see him wear, and like Dave Matthews would probably wear it these days. But our our producer, Dave yeah. Matthews, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but so I don't know what it's going to take to get people into an Air Force Three, quite literally. Well, can we talk about the most uh, hyped uh, sock liner of the oh. year? I know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, but. Jerry Lore- triple, triple collab. Prada, Jerry Lorenzo. Prada, Adidas, Jerry Lorenzo. He said he's created the most uh, hype sock liner Sold of all that? time. I did see that. Respectfully, you're talking about Ninja Turtles Superstore. Could you get the details on that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Listen. I'll do my best. respect to Michael. How many things do you want me to break on here? Well, How many exclusives do you need from me? Maybe just that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jerry was in New York. You know, he... he was honored at the Wall Street Journal mm-hmm. event. Could you have got, like I always say, the little <laughs> your little notepad and recorder? And could could you have got actually a, a scoop on the Prada Adidas Jerry Lorenzo? That seems like a big deal. Actually, this guy's talking about Master Splinter and Michelangelo and Donatello 
Let's two talk things. about two things. If ever either of y'all want to come on this show and break some exclusives oh, and tell us about some look upcoming at him. speakers, look if at ever y'all want to do some reporting, like I welcome it. Of course. Ooh, look at him. And yeah. the second thing is. You actually gave me the excuse not to go because if you remember oh, yeah, that did. night that, that Jerry Lorenzo that. was in the city yeah, and I texted right. you and I said, I think I'm going to skip out on that event. I wrote, I don't blame you. And you, not be- you yes. gave me the pass That's to not go. Yes, because I don't go anywhere. So <laughs> so if you want me to go, no. you know I'll be there. No, no, you don't need to go there. But <laughs> can you get the scoop though? Um, Sure, I'll, All right, text I'll work on it. That seems promising though. Yes, but we need... Fear of God, Adidas first. Okay. We need that to happen, and I think it's happening soon. Mm. So I want that to happen before we move on to the collaborations with more people involved and extra entities, even though I do think that sounds cool, Prada, Adidas, Fear of God. But let's not put the you know, the wrong things. What is it, the horse in front of the – I don't know. I don't know either. The cart and the horse. horse yeah. And ca- horse yeah. and carry. You know? Yeah. What is it? I know what you're talking about. Your, uh, how come you didn't wear your sunglasses on set today? Wow, he was going hard with those this yeah, weekend, right? He was in thought mode. You were on Demon Time. Like he was Lieutenant in thought Dangle. mode, yeah. Uh, why haven't you? Are what? you going to ever wear? Complex no. Con, maybe you come out in the, sh- in the come stars? Out, come out in the, the... Shout out our good friend, Derek. Sneaker Politics. Do you had the Sneaker song? Politics Oakleys on. Is that what you've been doing? Yeah. Okay. Good dude. Um, go, go listen to his episode of the podcast. Yes, please do. You guys feeling the the Kith 990 V6, the Madison Square Garden ones? I like those a lot. I'm going to be Wednesday night. I'll be at the Knicks game. What's the fit looking like? I haven't decided yet. You know, they're they're white, blue, and orange. I think that's the better of the two. The other one the is cream, the other the one a Rangers? Is the other one a Rangers? I think so. It's a it's definitely red. It's not orange. I'm into this too because I feel like New Balance collaborations or special edition New Balances don't often go into the territory that we see Nike or Adidas go into so much more frequently, which is team colors and things yeah. like that. So to see a New Balance sneaker in a Knicks color scheme or in a Rangers color scheme feels more novel than seeing a Jordan 1 or mm-hmm. an Air Max 90 or a 95 in those colors. And I feel like there's a lot of unmined territory for New Balance there. And, you know, that even even like more colorful New Balances still feel like a relatively new, yeah. relatively niche thing. So I'm, I'm quite into it. And I love that silhouette. I felt a little vindicated because I thought maybe I was jumping out the window saying about the 991 V2. You responded, I saw And then it. I said, I thought the shoe was great. And then Ronnie replied one of, saying one of the best shoes of the year. Which he said, the, which you stamped. stamped. You stamped it uh, a week earlier. You know, sometimes you, you come across the thought that uh, no one else has expressed, and you're like, wait, am I bugging by yeah. by saying this, or am I jumping out the window, or like mm-hmm. we're talking about with the SFAF one thing? You're like, is my take on this how things are going to be perceived? Not that I'm yeah. too worried about it, mm, but sometimes never. you kind of don't <laughs> want to be tripping, you know? Yeah. yeah. And okay, I'm like, all right, you put it out there, I and it's the, like I no one no one comes at you being like, you are insane. Da, 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 da. I saw he responded to that. Yeah, I want the Knicks um, Kith Jeff Hamilton leather though. Did you see that? I did not see that. I missed that one. Yeah. We're going to go tomorrow to see Wemby. You're not going to wear the Jeff Hamilton Supreme NBA jacket that. to the game? I don't have that. Special jacket. The white sneakers. I don't know. Rare moment. If anybody if can any, get you in white it, sneakers, it's, it's true. Ronnie it's Fine. true. Should we talk about the sneakers we have on feet? Oh, I forgot we were even wearing sneakers. Yes. <laughs> <I'm> wearing <laughs> house shoes. an out-of-body experience <laughs> yeah. right now. You forgot you were a... Yeah. A real 3D human. Exactly. I'm wearing the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Size 10, don't worry, wealthy. I don't bring these out too often, but... Got got them early, right? The Red Pandas? That's right. (laughs) Careful. No, not the Red Pandas. Yeah. Always look good. That's why it's one of the most iconic sneakers of all time, because they just look amazing. Do Do you feel like you inspired Nike to actually make the Red Panda dunk by jokingly calling that shoe the Red Pandas at some point? Did you do that on here or FSR? Um, I think I started that campaign on social media, yeah. on Twitter, about a year ago. I, <laughs> yeah, I do. 100%. Let's just say it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Let's just lie. Take, yeah. take credit. Yeah. I totally believe that Nike copied that for me. Sure. Yeah. No disclaimer needed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, if you're right, you're right. <laughs> so, sounds legit. Joe, what do you got on feet? Air Max 95 Animal Pack. One of my favorites that I always revisit. You usually see me once a season in these. I haven't worn them yet on this season of sneaker shopping, but wearing them 
on this season of the Complex Sneaker Show. So and but, always a big Air Max ninety five guy. We'll yes, ah, we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk Air Max ninety fives off. With, you maybe know. I'm trying to bring out a very special pair for Complex Con. And there's some special stuff coming up for next year, but like we'll we'll talk about that. Oh, later. okay. You know the pairs that like you're hoping and and they hit you like oh. Can you get it delivered to the hotel? That's that's how you're in close. you're in hot pursuit of an Air Max ninety five right now, and you yeah, can't and tell us which one it is. No, and that's how close that's how close it's going to be. Oh, can we guess if we no. get? Welty, do you do you have any idea what the you're Air never, Max ninety five? You're not going to get it. It's an old pair. No, you're not going to get it. I'm. I'm you're not going to get the it. One in thing, time for complex the one thing for complex. I might not. The one. <laughs> the one thing. But that, you know, if you know, you know. Pl- let's try to make it happen, please. I will say that. So not not surprise, but. You you're one of the Joe. You're one I'm of the really few. You're one of the few people Talk in the about sneaker it. space <laughs> that <laughs> is not afraid to be a repeat shoe wearer. Hundred percent. So brave. <laughs> yeah. But we're, no, we're, so I, we salute my bravery. I mean, no, I mean on yeah. on camera because a lot of people who you know when they go on camera they want to wear things that they haven't worn yeah. before. Mm-hmm. I think it's like Coral Studios 95s maybe Always. maybe up there with Always. your most worn pairs. Coral Studios 95 definitely. CDG white black Air Max 95. You know, I beat them and I wore them beat yeah. on the show. I have a dead stock pair that I recently got. That you could always count on. If anyone out there wants a challenge, put together a chart slash graphic with how many times Joe LaPuma has worn certain shoes on camera. I think it'd be actually really cool to That'd see. That'd be awesome. And we're not going to pay you for it. I would. You'd if you design them? it good, I would pay for that graphic. That's dope. We should do that. You're going to make a, you're going to do it a print, hang it up in the. That's hang, dope. A little infographic. All right. You got more money than me. Well, well it's not going to be that much, but <laughs> we'll pay for your time. Good idea. Wealthy, what are you wearing? These are the New Balance 610s. I know I had said before that I was done with this silhouette, not needing any more because I feel like I have. You said that before? Yeah, um, on camera. But yeah, this colorway. Oh, pe- yeah, people are going to be riding in the streets <laughs> when they see no. the, they, you broke no, no, your no, promise. I just, I, it's one of those <laughs> shoes that I just, I think because there, there was a handful of pairs that came out. There was the Joe Fresh Goods. Yeah, yeah, I like the Joe Fresh Goods. Uh, Bodega, I think I had like one of the first ones, a gray pair. And I was yep. like, oh, I think I have enough. Six tens, you know, and then certain shoes where you don't feel like you need thirty colorways. Good color scheme, That's all, yeah. Good um, colorway from uh, New Balance designer Ua Wu, who also did the protection pack, and he also ran his first half marathon this past week. And so, I want to give him a congratulations. And congratulations to him. And I think it was him. I can't remember exactly who previewed, but there's like a cow print pair of those i think coming yeah those look super good. Do they look too close to the footscape? The footscape strafe? woven? No, they don't. They look well enough different from okay. that footscape woven, and they look quite good and, and i know what you're talking about in terms of having a shoe and being like i don't need a ton of these but i saw those and i was like that's maybe the best looking 610 i've seen not having too much of the certain silhouette but like how many cow print shoes yes can one own yes you're right but if it you said it's different you know and look no. super crispy here what are those the footscapes they look really crispy here. With the don't oh, you think? Yeah. Beautiful. With the red. And also, I want to make a, not a correction, but a, a, a mental lapse when we were talking about the Sunder Max last week. Because okay. We were yes. talking about. I wasn't saying that you didn't influence it, but we totally, totally <laughs> skipped over also a big JLP shoe, the CDG Sunder Max. You know what's funny? Do you know that I had the same thing where I was like, "Wow, the Sunder Maxes are coming out for the first time." Ever yeah. like in years, and, and you like, forgot that you have like five pairs yes, of them already. Yeah. That's so funny you say that. I thought like, I thought like, wow, I haven't worn a Sunder Max in so long. Meanwhile, I've been wearing so many CDG Sunder Maxes and Lorenz Sunder Maxes. I had the same thought. This is not an uncommon practice from Nike though to have a collaborator bring out a shoe first, of and course. then sometimes maybe it's a season later, maybe it's a couple years later. You'll see it in the line and in GR colorways, even the. Your favorite shoe of late, I, I believe one of your favorites is the the CDG Pegasus UK <laughs> five. Uh, <laughs> Red, this, Red loves bringing this up. Even my boy Westside Gun loves bringing this up. Even my boy Westside Gun was like, uh, "What are those, fam? I don't know about those." <laughs> okay, but, you know, that's a shoe such where... a polite guess, and still kind of you know. Comme de Garcon brings it back, and there are plenty more on the way. Yeah. Or even um, the Nike Vimero five years ago. 
and this was a separate chapter in the shoe's life. Yeah, Samuel Ross, Doctor Samuel Ross, and yes. a cold wall brought the shoe back, and then we saw plenty of inline or versions even, of it. Uh, recently, I had those highs and lows. They're uh, white and brown, uh, A6 1130s. Yeah, and that was two summers ago or yeah. two years ago. And then when I was wearing that shoe, I was just like, oh, I don't know how this shoe's going to catch on mainstream wise. And yeah. little do you know, like a year and a half later, it's everywhere. Yeah, I yeah. brought my Jordans out today. Not a boy. Lost, lost and found Jordan ones. It's, it's so funny. This is a weird footnote on a shoe too, but like I always have to remind myself which stuff is the reimagined Jordan and which ones aren't. And the fact that these aren't part of the reimagined line technically, I don't think Nike ever, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but referred to these as like a reimagined shoe. But we've talked so much, I think, internally about the reimagined Air Jordans recently yeah. and like whether or not we approve of them. So far, I think just officially it's the Air Jordan 3, the white cement pair, which I love, the pre-H pair from earlier this year. And then one that just came out the black and blue royal air jordan one reimagined which is so divergent in a way that we weren't expecting yeah well, here's the biggest question that i have because if people are saying that that isn't a reimagined shoe which the lost the air and jordan one lost and found i'm saying it you're saying it is or isn't it isn't okay because nike never called it that okay right. but that's what sorry let, i have a thought yeah, i need yeah, to yeah. get out <laughs> so if people if, if some people call it reimagined sure. right and then some people say, Nike never called it this. It reimagines not attached to it. This is like a weird uh, chicken or the egg situation because it, Nike never attached it to it. But at, at that point that that shoe had come out, there was no idea of reimagined within Nike, right? Or public public facing. There, okay. there was no reimagined shoes that had been released yet, right? Air Jordan Retros. Yes, that Nike had put the label reimagined on. Then how was everyone calling the shoe a reimagined if it was going to be something that ended up coming out X amount of time later and they already had the, the, the buzzword for it that Nike was attaching the shoes if that word didn't even exist yet? Are you saying there's a conspiracy theory? I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. I think maybe or? that at some point... Uh, signals had got crossed or maybe not Ooh. officially put out, but maybe someone had said the word somewhere and then somehow it stuck. Caught on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems too much like you're like, don't believe in coincidences, you know, where it's like, Ooh. how did that word get attached to the shoe if that word didn't exist in Nike's lingo public facing yet? I know what you mean. And I think sometimes people say things and they get picked up by other outlets and it gets circulated. But I don't necessarily think that that means it's true. And this happens a lot in the world of sneakers where something gets reported and for years it's accepted as fact even though it was never really fact-checked. Regardless, I love the shoe. I'm happy to have it. And I, I, I think it's it, it fits more in line. Again, not officially a reimagined shoe from what I yeah. can remember or what we could discern, but it's kind of weird because the two ones that are officially reimagined that are out so far, like I said, the black and blue Royal Air Jordan 1, which looks so different from the original, yeah. and then the white cement Air Jordan 3, which is quite close to the original, but just has the faux aging on it. Another example where there's certain words that get thrown out within the sneaker lexicon, mm -hmm. and then maybe they aren't 100% accurate, but they still kind of go with what the topic that we're talking about. And maybe someone's going to correct you if you say it. Maybe someone isn't. Or mm -hmm. it's like pro B Nike dunks, yeah. right? Yeah. Th that was pre-Nike SB where they were called pro B, but they have like the fat tongue on it. They are a shoe kind of designed for skateboarding. Yeah, whether, they look like Nike Whether or not dunks. officially. And if someone goes talking about Nike SBs and they reference a pro B as part of the SBs, some people may say, no, that's a Pro B, it's not a SB, but yeah. I think collectively as like the sneaker community, like if someone were to include those while talking about SBs, they're not going to be like, no, that's not a Nike SB shoe. I kind of agree with you, but also I feel like we have to be exact about it, and I feel like we are sneaker nerds for that reason Pro because Bs. we're here to correct people or let people know, no, this is not that. Yeah. This is a technically a slightly different thing, or this shoe is different from that, and you can tell because of this slight change in it. I feel like Pro Bs were the prelude before to Nike SB? Yeah. Yeah. So, like the Alpha yeah. Numera dunk wasn't necessarily a Nike SB, but it's a collab with a skateboarding. Pro B right. and always set the stage for yeah. yeah. Pro B always reminds me of the like olive dunks, mm. you know, that era. Yeah. Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. There's like that 3M reddish pair. To get back to Jordan's for a second, that Air Jordan 1 reimagined the Royal pair feels like a bit of a flop, right? Well, that's what everyone was talking about online over the weekend or that was the probably the biggest sneaker 
discussion on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. Um, just the because the Royal ones to some people probably like a top five Air Jordan of all time. Mm, yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm not mad at anybody. Who definitely no, top ten. No to some people it may be like one or two. Some people it may be a six. I don't know. Yeah, it's like fair. but average of the sums of it, it's maybe a top five shoe of all time or Jordan. You do it slightly differently. And you expect a Royal Jordan one to sell out, right? That's the expectation of it. Yeah, I know that if maybe, it's an OG style. Yeah, yeah. Or even just, a, I feel like at this point, if it's actually a really good Jordan one, I know Jordan one people say are like kind of like not passe at this point, but they don't have the cooling same, down a little bit. Yeah. If it's good enough, it should sell out. These are sitting. Yeah, and I know that's not always the the litmus test or the benchmark whether a shoe sells out right away whether it's good or not yes but i think this is a tough one because i think there's been so many jordan ones so many iterations jordan highs jordan mids recently i feel like reimagined is one thing like if you're considering those reimagined with the kind of like distressed collar mm -hmm. and the white cement reimagined which is probably going to be on a bunch of sneaker of the year list with the jordan the, three yeah the yep. jordan three with the yellow sole mm -hmm. this royal one looks to me like one of those colorways that you could just mix in to this overarching so many Jordan 1 releases. Yes. This Not something that really sticks out or stands it's out. It's too different. It doesn't bring up the, the same nostalgia points as, even though it is technically a Royal 1, it doesn't really stand out as when you see that shoe, you're like Royal 1s. If, yes. if I was in a resale store that I'm filming sneaker shopping at and this was in the mix in the plastic amongst all the Jordan ones, I would I wouldn't be like I would just be like, oh, this is just a takeoff of the Jordan one that came out around a bunch of others. Or it almost this is f totally, totally different. It, What's the material? So suede. Yeah, suede. And the suede looks the the, the blue it looks really good. pops. The blue <laughs> looks good. Another take that I saw too, which was interesting but odd, was they're like People were saying online, they're like, why are people hating on these being suede Jordan 1s right now if New Balances in suede are so popular? That is so <laughs> different. No but I don't way. Who said that? I don't no know. I saw, I, saw it on, I saw it on that Twitter. That is so... That is I feel like, like you can't... Can, it's hard to conf, conflate That's like saying, how do you not like uh, pizza, but you like a hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> That's totally different. Do what? There's tons of material around. Yeah. That is respectfully whoever said that makes that doesn't make any sense. Or it's like somebody saying, "How do you believe that mustard on a pizza is bad when you like mustard on your hot dog?" Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Like, That's a better analogy. That doesn't make any sense. Like just props whoever it, said that, but no no, no props. But <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But it kind of it almost What's up with all this suede going around? Then we try to put it on a Jordan, and all of a sudden, that What's makes the deal no with sense. Suede, right? Yeah, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's totally different. It kind of, it almost looks when you take the way the materials are presented and the mm -hmm. way it comes across in that silhouette, it almost strikes me more as something you would see on like a Jordan One Mid rather than a yeah. Jordan that's, that's, One High. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it reminds me of that kind of like group of sneakers what was the one it wasn't fly ease what was the jordan royal that came in like that fly knit one fly knit fly knit air jordan what you know like reminds me a little bit of that doesn't stand out doesn't feel special that's doesn't what i feel mean like a og you know this is a jordan one retro high og a hundred percent which has to do with the shape and it just when you look at it you're like what's and OG here's about the thing that? well like both i don't know if you said it or you said it but it's a totally good looking shoe oh yeah but there's nothing wrong with nothing the shoe. Wrong, but this is not doesn't feel OG to me at all. It it almost kind of strikes me as that like if someone's just getting into sneakers, you know. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, I'm not hating. No, no, no. no I'm not hating. Don't not, say it's a starter kit. It, it it kind of it's like it's not a starter kit shoe, but it's like before you really get into the weeds of collecting shoes and searching stuff out and like wanting to track down the shoes that you really want or maybe have some historical significance to them, mm -hmm. it seems more of like, oh yeah, I got into sneakers and then like this is maybe one of the earlier shoes that you purchased just because it looked cool enough and you're like just happy to have them. My take on this is if someone sent me like, hey, I'm thinking about getting these. Yes. I like these. I would be like, you should totally get them. Yes. 100%. I think it's a good looking shoe. I think it's 
a cool enough shoe That's what for I mean. sure. Like it's like it's not where wrong it falls it, off. It is not an OG. It's not an OG. That's that's it. Here's the thing. Jordan brand is based on retro product. They have to figure out new ways to bring back old shoes. And it's not an easy job. No, it's tough. Would we rather see Jordan brand bring out products like this that slightly tweak originals, slightly change them? This feels not so slight because they're flipping the materials totally. Or would we rather see them bring out these originals in totally new color schemes and different materials that reference obscure points in Michael Jordan's life. I would rather see, even though I don't like the black and royal Air Jordan 1 reimagined with the suede on it, I would rather see those versions or, you know, ones that we've appreciated much more, the Air Jordan 3 white cement reimagined with the patina touches and the faux vintaging. I'd rather see that than here's an Air Jordan 2 based on the time that Michael Jordan stayed at the Marriott in Atlanta in yeah, 1987 or, or in room the, 406, the and it's the, the 406 ba- Jordan 2 and peach baseball colors. baseball glove Air Jordan 9. You know what I mean? I think storytelling is important, but I fully agree with you. But I would, I would take this over. Yes. The better topic of discussion on this is what's going to happen with the bread Jordan 4 reimagined. Right. That It looks like, again, we don't know if that's going to be the official designation. but that Okay, so here's where I think there's difference in that. <laughs> he's he's basically he's, he's this is where I think it's because this is an important shoe for you. You love this shoe, yes. And also, I said that I'm not into them because it's not an OG and, a, and that an OG should be in suede. I think it's different because there's been such an influx of ones versus a four that the bread leather four is a little different than this. It'll stand out. It'll it'll because it's the same approach. It is the same approach, but Just they're backwards. not as flooded. But the fours are not the fours are not as flooded as the shoes. ones have been. True. That's right. The fours haven't been as flooded no. as the ones. That's Nothing why I think it's a little different. The ones. Th- and that's I think that's that's important context. I yes, think there was absolutely. I think there was one point too where Jordan Brand said they're going to make ones more limited. This was like years ago where it was going to be like more of a like a less approach, and it's just funny that like what ended up happening to that shoe like remember when remember when they were putting the threes in the vault and what a shock oh, yeah. that was that was such a there should be pinpoints where it's like jordan brand said they the were going to do something and then ended up, then that ended up like throwing that idea away yeah. well i think they did lessen the amount of threes they were releasing for at least a while they never said they were going to put it quote unquote in the vault for forever but it was it was a funny headline that really generated a lot of discussion and people even on interviews being like, you know, you got to hold on to your threes right now because there's not, there's going to be a shortage of threes coming, you yeah, know? Yeah, everyone was, oh, yeah. Amaya had his tech fleece in a tizzy that day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He said, wait, four more years of wearing these black cements with the tongues out? <laughs> with the tongues like this? Oh, my God. But, you know, it's, and I've, I've said this before on this show, but one of the points that i am proud to have come to in my appreciation for jordan's particularly is like never really worrying about missing out on a pair unless it's a Mm -hmm. collaboration that i wanted because i do feel like on a long enough timeline any air jordan will come back at any given time i don't know though like what the ones that i'm waiting for what are you waiting for which jordans do you want to come back out ginger 16s and i and i'm this is all i'm just saying it'll happen I don't think so. I don't think so. I've heard people talk about that too. I preface this from these may not sell. You're just asking which ones. Personally. Cherrywood 16s, even though it's a white shoe. Uh, 16s especially, but the Ginger 16s would be one of my favorites. Just for sentimental reasons and what that shoe, like I just remember how good it kind of looks like a a field tim. Mm -hmm. It was released in the winter, I believe, or, or right before. And haven't seen that shoe again, 2001. 2001, even the black and red Jordan 16, which I wore to my graduation. This is it on your wish list for Jordans to come back. The 16 is high up there. But here's another thing. Where you said they might all come back, lightning Jordan 17 low, never would have thought that would come back. That's coming back. I remember when I got that. You know, I broke finish line policy by wearing them. I think I got them at an athlete's foot, Mm -hmm. and I walked in. They were super rare, super rare, and you're not allowed to wear shoes that finish line doesn't sell. I wore those, and it was such a big, big thing. And to be honest, they were kind of, like, obscure. I think it was a big Nike Talk shoe. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like, where are these going to be? These are limited. It was in the heart of the 17s, which I, I also love the 17s. I love the black 17 lows. But the Lightning 17 lows coming back, 
does give me hope that some of these obscure models may come back. Flint Gray 9. Shouts to Index Portland. Always. T and Mikey. Always. I went, I can't believe they had my size when I filmed Dame Lillard there. They hooked it up. Flint Gray 9. Another one. Come back out. Big Karan Butler shoe at UConn. I may be there in a couple weeks. We'll okay. talk about that later. <laughs> you know what I need? Can I can I Sorry. put a little thing on the wish list? Blacked out a little. Yeah. No, it's okay. I'm glad you're passionate. Grape Air Jordan 5s with Nike Air on the back. When was the last? I mean, there was the 2013 Grape oh. Air Jordan 5. We're that due. was a jump man on the back. We're I had due. a pair of those. I gave them to a friend. A shoe that I advocated in 2013 to be on the top uh the top list of the year, great the, five. There was there was that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, complete I was wanting to see if you were sleeping. Uh, uh, yeah, gotta, no, I'm not. I wanted to see. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. I'm <laughs> wait, I know you also came out in 2006. Yes, yes, yes. No, yeah. I was just. Let good, you good. have your piece. Keep I, going. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> How is it possible that we've never got a good Grape Air Jordan Five retro with Chris. Nike Air on the back? Like the closest thing we've had is that fresh Prince of Bel Air version well, without the laces in them. The only time that I'm not saying the only time that. Grape fives mattered, but like when that shoe came out in 2006, like when it got retro, it was like a big hoopla. Yeah. And obviously, that shoe's, like you said, fresh Prince of Bel Air, attached to sneaker culture. Beautiful but, 90s. But ever, since th- but ever since then, it's just never held the same, you know, light to the candle or whatever, or flame, whatever you want to, however you say that. Uh, <laughs> I think no, you just uh, made that one up. Couldn't hold it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm staying away from that. Yeah. But anyways, um, do you have any? No. Well, that's that's what. I, great also, five. Wait, 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 uh, great bait. Let, let me say no. one more thing about Aqua the great eight. Jordan no. five because I do feel passionate about it. So many, and I'll call it a classic Air Jordan. We don't like to use the word classic too liberally, but it's a classic Air Jordan. So many of those Nike Air versions have have come back, and there are so few. That we haven't got to experience as a retooled, reimagined, yeah. remastered, whatever you want to call it, retro with the original Nike Air branding. And I feel like great fives are so high up there for a lot of people. Maybe I am bigging them up more than the average, but how is it that they've not done that? Yeah. Why are we skipping that? I don't know. I just feel like we're like so far down the rabbit hole on Air Jordan uh, retros mm-hmm. at this point. Um, I feel like it was much... The idea of Air Jordan retros was much different. Oh uh, um, no, let's go ahead. What? I'm looking at the 2002 releases, and I can't believe the nostalgia I'm feeling. I'm gonna have a little bit of stories, but I, okay. I don't mean to interrupt, and I don't mean to keep sighing. No, I love that you're passionate. It's crazy, crazy. Like, call it nerdy, whatever you want. I'm looking at this comp. You're this, salivating. There's a twinkle in your eye. I f- just remember getting the the like. Feeling of getting these shoes at the wait, same wait, wait. time. Let him go. get his idea off. You Let him finish. get his idea off. And then, I'm, <laughs> then go. All right. Uh, Sorry. Just, I feel like we're so far down the rabbit hole on Air Jordan releases because when the true nostalgia over this need, the conversation of this needs to be retro mm-hmm. was, this, I'm not talking about this as old head, but when you take it back to the early 2000s, it's because things hadn't been retroed, or yes. if they had been retro, they were retroed ten years ago or twelve years ago, and then you're just not able to get a pair, right? Yes. Where it's like, I need these to come out because I can't find these shoes, and I want to be able to buy them, and they're just not and wear them. Yeah, and I don't want to have to go hunt on eBay, etc., totally. to like just try and hopefully find a pair of my size that's not all worn and cooked, etc. But now. In today's culture, where everything's been retroed, we've experienced retro Jordans for twenty plus years. Yeah, um, and there's places like StockX, Flight Club, Goat Stadium Goods, etc. Every mom and pop local consignment shop, where if you want to get a retro Jordan, you can go and buy the shoe if you really want to. any number of OG colorways and yes. dead stock condition for a reasonable price on yes. the secondary market. You can you can go you can go find them all. So yeah. it's like the idea of like getting super excited about this needs to get retro. I yes. feel like it's just completely diminished because we've put stories out there where it's like 20 Air Jordans that have never been retro and they're all like Air Jordan 16 lows or Air Jordan 15s, like things that like no where one 10 years ago you're that scraping, list was way you're scraping deeper. the bottom of the yes, barrel totally to find right. shoes that haven't been retro. Yes. And so it's not like these huge grail shoes that have just never come out when they're yeah. like, oh, we finally did Carmine 6s, you know, where it's that, like, 
oh, I'm super excited yes, for that. Yeah. It's just like the excitement's gone. And like we've seen it recently where it's like, oh, Chambray 7's like retro plus stuff yep. is like finally coming back out. And then it comes out. All of Air Jordan 5's coming back out. I am ready. Then it just goes sits at the at the outlet. And we're having the same discussion almost as with these reimagined Royal Jordan 1's where it's like, Everybody always wants, uh, it's like that uh, Nas lyric, when they do make the whip, your chips ain't right, by the time you can afford it, the car ain't important, right? Oh. Off the... That sounds... I, I was okay. thinking Jada Kiss. Always want what we can't have. Yeah. Why well, can't come through in a pecan jag. <sighs> but wasn't the... What, <laughs> I bugging? There wasn't we go. The Nas lyric was on the Nike, the... The song? Classic. Dun, dun, oh, was it? Dun, 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 dun. I'm not, yeah, about I'm Air not Force sure. Ones. Yeah. It sounds crisp. <laughs> <laughs> either way but it's like everyone always wants things to get retroed yes and then when they finally get retroed you're like nah i'm good not even that not even that i agree Sorry, with you can i put one footnote yes, yeah. also i said that we've been uh enjoying or participating in retro jordans for 20 plus years i mean the 21st century version of there really being a big retro business not i know yes Jordan's 1994, retro, yeah, 1994 exactly. okay just want to put the asterisk out there in case somebody wants i mean even it. even more than that because it's like when the first like 94 yeah, of course, yeah. but like 99, 2000 yeah, yeah, yeah. was like the real first yes. wave of retro. Like Jordan I, retro. I feel like when you talk about the most important Jordan retros of all time are ones that hold cultural weight to this whole community, not including the Jordan 11 Christmas hype. Yes. You talk about the, the Air Jordan 4s when they when they first got retro. Come with, on. With the Nike Air on the back. Come on. I feel like when I you talk about retro so shoes, long, to me, so that, that is like the pinnacle White of cement. but and i know that it's been discussed many a times by people like kanye don c mm -hmm. uh etc but wale when that shoe um came out that was to me what air jordan retro meant that's why people wanted retro air jordans it wasn't just because of the stuff mike did back in the day which obviously was the the bulk of it but how good those 99 slash 2000 bread Jordan 4s were. Nike Air on the back. Is yes. why people wanted to see more shoes get retroed to begin with. Yes. And also, Wale, if you're like watching this, can you please come on full size run before For the, the show? For the last season, Before Wale, the show is done. I'm like gonna, I'll work on it. Thank you, Joe. I told, I'll work on it. Thank you, Joe. Do you want to take us back to 2002? Yes. By the way, I love that rationale from yes. you. Yes. And, I totally and I, agree. I agree. I feel like sometimes I'll see a release from back in the day, even the Lightnings. Like, mm -hmm. do we think the Lightnings are going to sell out? The Lightning Low 17s? No. no. It's just and, it's and still a cool shoe. Not every shoe has so, to sell and out. Back it's so then expensive, it was, too, right? And, yeah. and back then, it was such a, a rare shoe and, like, an anomaly in, in and this. a big-time Wale shoe. Big-time Wale shoe, exactly. But I'll see that and get excited, but it, it doesn't... Also, we're older, so it's a little different. It doesn't make me want to run out to the store. I have to get them. Yeah. But I say that all to say this 2002 year, I'm going to skip around. Mm hmm and I'm looking at this, and I remember I was buying every white and black colorway of the releases that came out. Just Jordans or in general? J just Jordans. Yeah. I would come home and work from college. I was at UConn, so mm -hmm. I was like scrambling money together. I don't even – and then hoping that the releases – I remember being like, okay, these are releasing on a break of when I'm going to be working at finish line so I know I could get them. Mm -hmm. And then the others, I had to figure it out. Listen to this run of shoes. And I remember a specific night in October, I remember I wanted the 17 lows with the alligator on the collar mm -hmm. in October. Air Jordan 17 OG low, black chrome. Then I remember the cool gray nines, which let's be honest, didn't age well, right? Cool gray nines? Um, I'm not mad at that Okay. Show. Didn't hit like the cool gray 11s. No, I remember. Uh, yeah. So that was, I think, two or three weeks later than the all black 17 lows. And I just remember, I don't know how it happened, but I got both of them. And I just remember that, like, getting that package and getting those two together. Then, then you go. <laughs> We're going on. through your daily planner hold from on. 2002. Then, <laughs> then French blue sevens. Yes. Raptor sevens. Yes. Same day in December. You wore white Air Jordans. Yes, seven? not a lot. Even back then, He's I wanted them all. The French, the French blue Jordan Seven. You know why I wanted them, right? Because someone at UConn, UConn fab, something. fab video. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, you, we were both just like the somebody, the guy in the dorm next to you at UConn. You need to put Charlie Villa in the wave. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, then huge JLP shoe, April. 
Jordan Retro 6 Low, black and chrome. They recently came out. Yeah. I don't know what years. You, yeah, I, I, yeah. Once upon a time, I wanted but this shoe. Wore these and got the white and blue. Never wore them. Do you, Do you want, feel like you want those now? No, that no, shoe's not coming, but it not takes it. me back to a time where it's like if you could, if if I could imagine that we're here, tw 2002, mm -hmm. 21 years later, talking about this stuff, could not believe it. I remember, I just remember, I don't know how I got the, I, I remember the same night, the same night I got the black 17 lows with the little bit alligator and the cool gray nines, and I was like. It was it was like the the best feeling in the world, and also the hunt of scrounging money together to yeah. get a pair of these in this year. It was like m the first or second year of college. Calling Rudy Calderon, hide them, hide them in the back room. Put them on, not, don't put them in the hold section put, put yeah. with layaway. everyone. Put them, put, put them on top of the bathroom. Nothing worse. Nothing put worse. them on top of the bathroom. Nothing worse, nothing worse than people putting uh, release date sneakers on layaway Why? and then never showing up ever again. Okay. Yeah, uh, right. Well, I think it expired though. Yeah, but it, well, because you could. What would happen was you could come in and you could put. I think it was like ten percent down or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you'd only had to pay fifteen or twenty dollars, or maybe even twenty percent. I forget what the percentage was, but it was a small percentage, and the shoe would be yours. So yeah. no one else could purchase yes. it because it was on layaway. Couldn't but you was, come back but also was, and put more and then extend it? Yeah, yeah. Well, not extend it, but you would, you could pay. It's almost like a, like a loan system of yeah, you yeah, pay, yeah. paying off the shoe. But it, I think it was 30 days that the shoe could be on layaway. And there'd be people who just come in because they wanted to think that they were going to buy it. And then they never ended up purchasing the shoe. Do they get their money I think back? they lose the, the uh, deposit. I, I they would lose. say the majority of people who ended up not paying for the shoe ended up never even coming to the store again. You know, it's like they came there, put it on layaway, and yeah. just never ended up coming back. In. A lot. But, but then you can't sell the shoe for another 30 days, and yeah, you have, like, you're sold out, but you have one ah, pair. Okay. You have one pair in the back. We're talking about, sorry, one last thing I want to sure. bring up is when we're talking about retro Air Jordans that mattered and made retro Air Jordans cool, I know there was the 2001 uh, Air Jordan ones that people are crazy about obviously uh, the numbered pairs yeah and i think like the coloring on those shoes is like a little uh like the red's a little brighter or something like and that. the shape is not that good but i i i mean i like them but uh the one shoe i feel like that really drummed things up back then was the the retro of the infrared air jordan 6 yes yes nike air on the back in the so in the good thousands um so good also, another like not to keep on bringing him up, but like another, I feel like that was a shoe that Kanye wore early yes, on with like with the, the le yeah. khaki pants. I think he, maybe leather pants too. And yes, and I but he all can't remember he had like exactly the khaki pants he had. Yeah, he had like the he had like a khaki suit with like a tie. He performed. I think he had. But real quick before, just talking about two thousand two one more time. Please. January, white and black Air Jordan Nine. That was a big one for you. March, two months later, Olive Jordan Nine. I know you died in black. We know about that. I did die in black. But, <laughs> and then May, like I said, Flint French Blue Jordan 9. Yeah. What I like about these is like, these aren't, you know, you talked about the infrared six. These aren't them. That's why I have a strong yeah, connection. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah, yeah. listen, I feel like people, this 2002 end of 2001 lineup is so nostalgic for me. I look into this and I'm like, I remember, I don't regret buying any of these. I yeah. love these shoes, even some that I would not wear. I like have a strong attachment to them. I wonder where people put this 2002 Air Jordan uh, release because, listen. In terms of the greatest yeah, spans of Air Jordan. One of the years that it, it hit right when I was fully into it. But to your point, it's there's no, I'm not talking about infrared sixes or the Jordan 1 2000. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to sneakers, though, just in general, from like a relativity standpoint, it's just like the, or, Anything it comes to collecting, the year that you were most passionate about it to yes. you, to you is always the best era of it. Even though it's probably there's a high likelihood that, regardless of what we're talking about, it may not be the real golden era of yes. something. But yes. people always have the strongest uh, emotional connection to the year that the the span, like the eighteen months, two years that they were super into yes. something. I mean, I have the Every same feeling release. because I think about Jordans that I would want to have come back, and I think about a lot of stuff that came out when I was in college, like Air Jordan sixes. Even though there have been a lot of infrared Air Jordan sixes that came out since, and I never bought any of them, and I don't even know like how often I would wear a Jordan six on mm -hmm. my feet if I had the pairs that I wanted mm -hmm. right now. 
but still I think back to that time, you know, 2009, 2008, going into like 2012, when there were all those Jordan sixes out. And I, I, I have to imagine that there's something from that era that I want back that is not the actual shoe, mm -hmm. but the shoe is the thing that I associate with yes, it. The you feeling. know, like because the feeling. because any of these shoes that come back now, you're not gonna buy it. You're not gonna buy it. No, Air, but I feel I remember Olive, but. I remember this T Mobile sidekick yeah. <laughs> trying to get them. And isn't simpler is, times? Isn't the uh, aren't the white and Carolina blue nines? That's the shoe that Jay Z is referencing when he says Carolina blue kicks. Maybe. I don't know. I think you, you hit Maya, your rap Maya, corner for the day. Maya, Maya, <laughs> yeah. Maya best of me. He had. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Delray Ross. He had the whole UNC fit at North Carolina. And one big speaker in the dorm room. Mm. One huge speaker just blasting Jay-Z. And he had the Carolina headband. Simpler times. My boy knows. Listen. What a that, what an era! I want I want some I think I want some of those 16s to come back. You want a time machine so you can yeah. go back to then. You don't want the shoes. No, back. you don't want the want... shoe. You just yeah. want the feeling associated yes. with the shoe. Yeah, yes. I feel like that's why a the lot best. of these shoes, when people ask for them to get retroed and then they brick from a yeah. business perspective, I agree. It's like you wanted the shoe because 40 year old version of you wants to be 19 year old version of you just for a glimpse look at him you're looking at me but he's calling you out right now <laughs> i'm not saying that i mean i like I yeah, feel, yeah, yeah. I we've feel, all been there we all we, we all feel that way it's like everyone's nostalgic for something that they can't like tap into anymore agree and that those specific releases what i just went through i remember it like clear as day it was like i might as well have like opened up those boxes checked out and then went to sarku five steps later like do you in think the mall <laughs> in the mall in like the holiday Joe, season do you think that i mean look to your left those mork and mindy dunks right do you think if that shoe retroed right now that i'd go out and spend my money on no, that that's shoe? your pair of mork and mindy dunks yes no way in but this would you universe feel? would i go and buy that sneaker if nike were to release it right now but do i want to go back to 2006 or 2007 when that shoe came out and be streetwear matt again with the hundreds t-shirt in a in a, in a camo I'm shed a tear right now. camo camo cargo shorts 10 deep fitted hat oh wow you know being on newberry street in boston running out of the karma loop store do wow. i want to be that person again just for a minute. Explaining to people that of they course. don't actually sell cupcakes at Johnny Cupcakes. Exactly. Yes, I want to go back to that, but I don't want to purchase that shoe now. Fair. I love, But I want the memory of it, you know? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. 100%. That's all we have to hold on to are the memories. That's it, but, you know, kind of puts a, kind of puts a battery in my back. Yeah? Keep doing this. We have a, a busy couple weeks. We accidentally got super deep. Yeah. A busy couple of weeks, but not actually on the show, because like you mentioned earlier, we're, we're taking two weeks off. Two weeks off after this episode. Yeah. We will be at ComplexCon. We hope to see you guys. We'll be on the floor, the Sneaker of the Year panel. Maybe we'll record some podcasts there yeah. to come out a little later. But and we will... it's Thanksgiving the week yes. after that, so Do, taking you know a break I'm looking for forward to most, though? California Pizza Kitchen? No, <laughs> is uh, the JLP laid out uh, ComplexCon footwear rotation yearly pick that's going to go oh. down. Uh, yeah. If I get this one pair, I'm working I'm on. He, I, he he, he's saying it kind of facetiously, but no, he, he's he, not. No, I'm not. He okay, likes yeah, it. Yeah, 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 after yeah, he I'm said like the that. after <laughs> he said the WBF, the whole everyone World came out. World Festival was, and, and he <laughs> said that the bag, as, yeah. my JLP little bag, was hey, the moment of the weekend. No, he's bag, not capping. Yeah. The World Basketball Festival. It's like, yeah, it's like a it's like a footnote in the history of things at this point. If Unlike I get like Joe Lapuma, hey, the JL the monogrammed. It is, hey, but the JLP, the JLP footwear bag is forever. That That's vent's true. already come and gone. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna. We're not. And listen, the rotation. If I get this pair that I'm working on, yes, you what know who it? you are. What is it? We'll, we'll see. see in what Long is he Beach. working on? We'll see in Long Beach, and if I don't get it, I'll let you guys know. After it's an Air I don't Max 95. It. Yeah. All right, everyone. This yep. is it, right? Mm -hmm. No, this is not it. I want yeah. to know what the shoe is. All right, everyone. Listen, we're off for two weeks. Go binge. Enjoy your holiday. Hope to see you guys at Complex. Yeah, get Con. a ticket. Get a VIP. Are VIP tickets sold out there? Might still be a VIP tickets. Might Don't be. ask for us for tickets. Go Might be tickets. some. All right, everyone. This has been the Complex Sneaker Show. We hope everyone has a good two weeks. Go binge some old episodes. We will see you very soon. <laughs>